Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over UFC 283 from a DFS perspective, uh, which is uh, uh, starts uh, Saturday, January 21st. And keep on the lookout. We're also going to do a separate uh, betting video, which, as you've been following me for the last you know several months, is completely different. R remember, you're trying to accomplish different things with respect to getting edges whether you're doing dfs or or betting you know the, one of the overarching assumptions of mma dfs as well with all dfs is that the uh is that the vegas lines are somewhat accurate and the vegas prop lines are somewhat accurate and what you do is you try to um you know you take those prop lines and those assumed betting lines and that information filters down into projections uh, of how a fighter is going to do from a DFS perspective. And everybody has access to these same types of analyses. Um, and then what it comes down to then is how to build your lineups uh, based on the same information that pretty much everybody has. It's just kind of a battle of interpretation and a battle of construction. But the overarching assumption is that, or presumption, is that, uh, the the lines that are you know implied by Vegas are somewhat efficient, whereas betting, uh, if you're going to bet on MMA or bet on anything, the, your overarching presumption is that there's something wrong with the line and that you have an edge in some way. Um, so that's two completely different ways of of of, of approaching two completely different skill sets. Um, so from a DFS perspective, I will say this: this card is a war. Okay. When I say it's a war, I mean, there are 15 fights on the card. Uh, there are rumors that maybe one or two might get canceled because of weight issues. But at, at least as of this recording, there are 15 fights. And when you have 15 fights in general, it's a very, very difficult card. <laughs> um, it, it also is a great card from a GPP perspective, because if you play that tournament where you like this one that I have up here with 100,000 for first, you're battling with zillions of people in it. Um, you need to have a big card to generate a lot of combinations that have a chance so that you can come up with a decent lineup that might not be duplicated by that many uh, other entries. Um, the other thing about this card, which makes it particularly a war, is that there are a lot of fights with which have very strong inside the distance problems, uh, meaning that, uh, it's it's likely or at least almost likely that these fights do finish and and remember that's what we're looking for in, in, in DraftKings scoring we're looking for for fights that finish we're looking for fights with a lot of volume we're looking for fights with a lot of takedowns but in general you're, you're looking for fights that ready to finish early because you get a lot of bonus points for that um However, this card also throws a couple of, uh, of, of monkeys in the wrench, so to speak, where you have two five-round fights. Now, again, it's, 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 it's kind of annoying that this happens uh, from a DFS perspective, but you remember, uh, UFC does not care about DFS. They're, they're building their cards based on popularity, and, and if they want to you know, card two five-round fights, that's really good for them. But it does provide some issues with respect to DFS because all else being equal, a five-round fight is going to score more than a three-round fight, right? Because you just have five rounds to work with to amass fantasy points. And unfortunately, DraftKings has not really found a way or the need to, to create dynamic pricing to account for that. Um, they will basically price these five-round fights with the same algorithm as if they were three-round fights. So you have automatic inherent value in basically all five round fights. Um, however, it's not the end of the story, right? Because uh, it, so much of what makes a good GPP lineup is is ownership, in other words, or lack thereof. You you, you want to pick fights and construct lineups that are not going to be duplicated by that many other entries. So yeah, it's it's easy to say that. These five round fights in general uh, rate to score really well. I mean, of course, but if everybody else knows that too, where are you going to get your edge? Maybe it's better to take fights that that rate to score less, but do have several outcomes within that you know that that that, uh, that shuffle box, so to speak, 
that outscore the five round fights that are going to be much higher on. So whenever you have one five round fight, which is every card, that's already difficult. And when you have two five round fights, fights, it's extra difficult. So between all of these fights that have, you know, good finishing upside and the two five round fights, um, it's, 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 it's rough and it's tough, but we're going to, we're going to take a shot at it. Um, one thing that we don't have, uh, at least yet, actually it's too late for this to happen now. We don't have any replacement fighters, meaning that there's not, there's no huge win equity. Like last week we had, uh, Dan Argetta, who was priced as if he were a minus 150 favorite, but he was really a minus 500 um, because of the, you know, the change in opponent. See that, and I went over this, that was literally a theoretical lock. You know, you, you could not, at least in my opinion, avoid playing that. Now, it turns out that only 40% of the people play, playing him, um, I think people try to get a little bit too cute, and he, you know, smashed really easily. I mean, he put up a very... He put up 100, 100 fantasy points basically in his in a tuxedo. Um, and I'm pretty sure he was on the optimal as well. Uh, nonetheless, I want to approach this slate um, two different ways. First, I'd like to make it easy for you. Then we're going to make it kind of hard for you. Right? So, so let's make it easy first. We have a five-round fight between Jamal Hill and Glover Teixeira, and the pricing is awesome. You know, it's 8,400 and 7,800. Awesome in that, you know, there's no one guy that's priced better than the other because this is what really the, the odds are. Um, Jamal Hill is about a one minus 140 favorite, and he's priced as if it was about a minus 140 favorite. Uh, to share is about a 130 underdog, and he's priced as 130 underdog. The thing is, though, is that you have, it's number one, it's a five-round fight. So you have an incredible amount of time to work with. And number two, it's got an extremely strong inside the distance prop as well. Um, this fight is about a minus 450 or so to finish, which means about 80% of the time this fight finishes. And if I told you that and, and you had an $8,400, $7,800 fighter, this is exactly what you want. And if you also throw on top of that the five-round upside, okay, um, that makes it even more juicy. And then if you also throw in the fact that Teixeira has takedown upside, okay, um, and control time upside, uh, that makes even his side extra juicy. Um, so right off the bat, you know, if you want to make it easy, you'll play both sides of this fight and know that you're getting good value. Now, you're going to get the same good value as a lot of other people that are going to play this card. But nonetheless, it is tough to avoid that those that's, uh, you know, this is what you want to do. Make life easy. Play both these guys. If they had to pick one, I don't know, to share maybe, it, just because he's the underdog, uh, because he could more likely to get there in a decision. Actually, that's not true. He's not even more likely to get there in a decision. He's more likely to score well in a decision, right? If he somehow gets the decision, he's probably going to get up, have a bunch of takedowns, where if Hill gets the decision, it's going to be just more strikes. Um, but uh, overall, I think either of these guys are, is, are, are you should be playing. And to make it easier as well, I mean, let's look at the other five-round fight. I mean, this other five-round fight's going to be a little lower owned, but it's still going to be really popular, and, and for, for damn good reason. I mean, you have, you have a five-round fight with two very active fighters, you're just going to have the opportunity just to garner just so many points, even in the absence of a finish. You know, um, the, the actual inside the distance prop for this fight is not that that juicy. As a matter of fact, what is it about Pickham? If that, let me see. Inside the distance is um, the bad even money. Maybe slight favorites go to decision. So from a pure inside the distance prop, it's not that great, but you have these very highly skilled and highly active fighters. You're just over five rounds. It's going to just, you're just going to rack up fantasy points. Now, is it going to be enough to make optimal considering all the other fights that could smash? Uh, maybe not. Uh, is it, is it enough to be optimal 
also with enough low ownership. In other words, if 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 this fight does finish, or if these if these guys get you know a hundred points for winning, uh, even in decision, uh, are you going to want that if both fighters are going to be forty percent owned? No, but again, we're making it easy. So for now, let's say that you want to you want both sides of the of the of the main, and you want both sides of the Moreno Figueroa fight. So let's let's make uh, let's let's make life easy again. Let's go to another fight where I think you can make life easy. Let's go to a couple of them. First, we'll go to Terrence McKinney versus uh, Ishmael Bonfi. So I want to tell you the inside the distance prop for this fight. Um, okay. First of all, overall, you have, hold on. Fight doesn't go to decision is minus 700, okay, which basically means 85% of the time this fight finishes. And, and you have a, a pricing of 8,500, 7,700. I mean, this is what you're supposed to do. You know, you're supposed to play this fight. Um, not to mention, Terrence McKinney also has some wrestling upside. Not that he needs it, but from a DraftKings perspective, it's always good to have. Um, now, when you break this down by, you know, where the inside of distance prop comes from, yeah, it's more likely to come from McKinney. Like McKinney's inside the distance prop is about minus 110. But even Bon Fim is like plus, you know, what is this, plus 120, something like that. So I think both these guys are really live and really, you know, guys you're supposed to play in DFS. And you want to make your life easy, you'll play both of these guys. You know? So we're already turning a 15 fight card into something really, really small. You have, you have the main event, you have the, um, the co main event, you have McKinney Bond theme. I mean, all these fights rate to score really well. Which side you take, I don't know. But you should probably, you know, grab somebody from those fights. Um, okay. Those are the easiest fights to to deal with. Okay, I think you're supposed to play those fights. Let me let me try to make life a little easy as well. And let's talk about. Well, I was about to say let's talk about fights you shouldn't play, but there are, there really aren't that many. Um, let's look at. Um, okay, we're not going to do that. We're going to go now fight by fight for the rest of this. Um, because I think you can make a case in most in most of these fights, but we will prioritize. The next one I want to go through, we're not going to do this one in particular order, is this is the next one that I thought was close to being a must play. And I think it's close enough that if we're, if we're sticking to the let's make life easy, I think we want to talk about this one first. And that would be Johnny Walker versus Paul Craig. These are two guys that are just, this is just, not going to decision. Now, again, I say that it's not a very statistically, you know, smart thing to say, but look at the inside the distance prop here. You have fight doesn't go to decision is minus minus 600. I mean, this is the same. It's the same as the, as the um, McKinney fight pretty much. So let's, let's do this. Actually, let's make this part of the easy, the easy patch, you know, Johnny Walker, Paul Craig, uh, you have pricing 87.75. Um, and when you break this down, you have Johnny Walker inside the distance is minus 120 or so, which is huge. But even Craig inside the distance, like plus 230, which is definitely reasonable. Okay. Um, so I, I think that you want to take both of this, both sides of this fight as well. So we already now, I mean, we're turning a 15 fight card into. Basically, now we have four. So, like, for example, if you wanted to do this, you could play, say, let's say you want to take all the underdogs in those fights I just mentioned. You play Teixeira, then you play Moreno, then you play uh, Craig and Bonfim. Not this Bonfim, the other Bonfim, the uh, cheaper Bonfim. Let's find him. Hold on. Um, cheaper Bonfim. And then you could just spend up. For, for for stunts, which we'll get to. Okay, so 
This is definitely one construction you can do. Now, let's say you didn't want to do that. Let's say you want to just play the, the favorites. You go Hill, Figueredo, Walker, to show you what the line of construction could look like. And McKinney, you could play all four of those and you still don't even have to dumpster dive. You know, you could play one punt and get to one expensive guy and you're off to the races, you know, with the four favorites in those key fights. You know, so, so I think this is a very reasonable way to do it. Now, again, if you were a big MME guy, you could get all the combinations of these four. Okay. Um, and again, but now you're, you're really risking it. You're playing literally those, all four of those fights need to get there. Okay. Um, and not only all four of those feats might need to get there, but they have to outscore like all the other fights. Okay. And that's not, that's not easy to do, but that is definitely one way to play. And it's definitely, it's kind of a fun way to play because I don't know, because, well, first of all, you're, you have, you definitely have action in the last two fights, right? Uh, if you have all the combinations, you're going to have two fights in a row with action. Um, hopefully you're not knocked out by then, so to speak. Um, okay. Let's now, uh, so those I thought were kind of the easy fights. Now let's just kind of go through like step-by-step step some of these others. So what we're looking for um, are is finishing upside and, and or uh, uh, grappling upside. And we're, we're trying to find live underdogs as well. We're just going to go straight up the card for the fights that we haven't talked about yet. So Marcos and Oliveira. So as far as pricing goes, and we do like to double check this. Um, 8,800, no, 8,600, 7,600. And that actually corresponds rather nicely with, with the actual money line. So you're getting no, no edge there. With respect to inside the distance props, you know, given those other fighters, I, I think that you're really looking for an inside the distance prop of pick them or better, um, unless you're going to have a, a whole bunch of, okay, of, of grappling upside, which you really don't have that much of in this fight. Um, I, should I say that? I mean, it's possible one of these guys goes for a bunch of takedowns, but it's not their it's not a smash spot. In other words, it's not going to happen, you know, every time. Um, so we'll take a look at the inside distance crossing. Marcos is plus 250. Olivero is plus 200. I mean, that's all right. I mean, like Marcos, for example, he's a plus, what's that, 300? But you compare that to, say, Paul Craig, who was plus, like, 220, right? Um, well, actually, it's the same kind of plus 240 at much cheaper. So, you know what? I think the difference in ownership between Craig and Marcos might make Marcos a really a good GPP play. Because let's, let, again, we'll look at this again. Craig inside the distance is plus 240, right? We're kind of splitting the difference here. So Craig inside the distance is plus 240. And Marcos Marcos inside the distance is plus 280. Ah, he's going to be lower owned, but he's more expensive. I'll, I'll throw him in. I'll throw him in. I, I, I think he's definitely in there. Um, is, the, is the difference in ownership between him and Craig going to make up for it? The fact that his 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 inside the distance props a little worse and he's a little more expensive. I don't know. I think it's I think it's tough, but I think it's certainly an MME you got to play. Um, Oliver on the other side. I mean, again, like I said, at that price, I just want a little bit better on this slate. Um, so he's. He'll make some builds uh, in 150s, but he's not going to be that highly owned as far as my my exposures uh, uh, is. As far as my exposures will dictate. All right, next one, you have Nunez versus Sarah Fair. Um, she's a minus 500, and she's priced, you know, 
pretty close to that. Um, in addition to that, her inside the distance prop is pretty pretty strong. Um, Nunez by KO specifically is minus 125. I think that's pretty much where, where it all is, right? Nunez inside the distance, like minus 130. And when it comes to $9,400 fighters or 9,500s, in my opinion, you need at least this. You know, like like for me, I think that if you're, if you're not going to have KO upside, excuse me, grappling upside on top of this, I really think this is the the cutoff, you know, right around here. Um, minus 140 inside the distance for 94, 9,500. Um, the, the thing is, though, is that I don't know how owned she's going to be. I, again, I don't have my full ownership projections out here yet, but I, I have this feeling that she's not going to be as highly owned as some of these other more expensive fighters. So if you get her at a pretty reasonable inside the distance prop, uh, and and she's not as highly owned. I think she's a very very strong GPP play. Um, Theron plus five hundred, not for me. Dalby versus Wardley Alves. This is just well, we'll we'll talk about it. But this is this is a this is a fade. First of all, when it comes to inside the well, excuse me, uh, pricing. Alves a minus one twenty five versus Dalby plus two hundred. And it's priced exactly the way it's supposed to be. And with respect to inside the distance props, you have, it's really poor. You have fight. Well, I shouldn't say really poor. Fight doesn't go to decision. It's about to pick them. I, I thought it would be be, uh, be worse. What is Alves? Can you get, like, is he plus 200 maybe? Inside the distance, let's see. Mm, not quite. It's like plus 230 inside the distance. Plus 230 inside the distance at 8,300? I don't know. Maybe that's not that. That's not terrible. I mean, okay. So what, I, what I'll do is I'll do this. Uh, Dalby, we're not betting. Okay, because Dalby's inside the distance line is, is a disaster. He's like plus 300, something like that. But all of us at plus two twenty. I think I think they're gonna make the GPP pool. I, I just do. Oh boy. Um. Again, in, in twenty max, three max, whatever. I just can't play them. But but I have to say that 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 on this card, these guys are gonna be so low on both these guys. You're just gonna have to play them. So. Unfortunately, that's that's going to be probably the theme for the rest of this card. Is it's just that you could listen, you could avoid the plus 500s, but everybody else is probably in play because of low ownership. We talked about Bonfim McKenna, uh, excuse me, not McKenna, um, McKinney, Stammen versus Lacerda. All right, so first of all, let's look at the uh money line here. He's a minus 380 or so, minus 350. He's being priced pretty much as such. When it comes to the inside of distance prop, uh, again, for 92, 9,300, we need a either an inside of distance prop at about pick'em or significant grappling upside. So stamina inside the distance is extremely poor. The real question is, is will he go to that wrestling and be able to dominate in the wrestling department? Okay. If in fact he can, he can he can rack up enough points um, to pay off ninety two hundred. And on most cards, I, I just had this feeling that you're just going to need more in general. And and if he goes to decision, which he's going to do most of the time, that he wins, and he scores a ninety five or a hundred, I don't think that's necessarily going to be enough. So I think overall, he's just not going to make my my 20 max builds. Now, again, he's going to be low-owned. Probably have to sprinkle him in GPPs and MME, but your overall best plays, I wouldn't play him. The Lacerda play is is is, is interesting. Um, his inside the distance prop, let's take a look. I mean, it's really not interesting. It's plus 600. I'm just... I just can't do it. 
It's just the math doesn't support it. So he's not going to make it. Uh, all right, Almeida versus uh, Abru uh, Dika. Guy who's going to lose. Um, Almeida is minus a thousand, um, and his price is well. This is the most I've seen is ninety seven hundred. Okay. Um, so what do you need for ninety seven hundred? Well, first of all, you have to remember that that what you need is not what. <laughs> doesn't mean that you could put him in your lineup if you get it, you know, because you have to be able to fill in the rest of your lineup. So, but for 9,700 in a vacuum, I mean, you need, boy, I would say guaranteed first round, either guaranteed first round in one minute, right? Or guaranteed one minute, uh, excuse me, guaranteed round one with, multiple takedowns probably or maybe a round two with maybe five takedowns you know here you know what i want to do i want to pull up this tool here so we can play around with that just for just for fun okay all right so just for fun we're going to pull up mme again this is kind of a fun thing that i i created so that people can sweat their Sweat their lineups. Like they have to wait for, they don't want to wait for the results to come in on DF, uh, on DraftKings. This is kind of a, a scoring tool that I developed that you could like manually put in the data that you get from, like, from ESPN to see what score you'd get. So let's just see, like, what do you need to get like 120 points? So let's say that, so for Almeida, if he wins in the first round, put first round win there, let's say, one takedown, one takedown, and then he controls them for, say, two minutes. Makes sense. It's 120 seconds. And let's say you put it, I don't know, 40 significant strikes, or let's say 50 total strikes. Can you do that? All right. So if you could do that, 50, but this is a tough to do. 50, can you have 50 strikes in three minutes? Ah. Oh. And 40, I don't think so. So so let's be a little more reasonable. Let's do this. So this is being probably perfect. He takes him down, controls him for two minutes, 30 significant strikes, 40 strikes total, first round win, 112. So that's probably not going to be enough. I mean, 9,700, you need 120. Now, you could get the quick win bonus, right? So, so now, let's say we put quick win bonus here. Now, if you put the quick win bonus, you can't have 120 control time, right? Probably going to be maybe 15 seconds of control time, if that. And you're not going to be able to get, like, all these strikes in, maybe 20, maybe 10 significant strikes, maybe one takedown, right? And then you get 126. So, so this is what you kind of need out of Almeida to get, like, the 125. You need, you need the takedown. And you probably need a one to finish in the first minute. Or if you're not going to finish in the first minute, you're going to need probably two takedowns and maybe 40 strikes, 20 significant strikes, and maybe also 60 seconds of control time, maybe. That gets you 113. The, the point I'm making is it's tough to get 120 points. Okay. Um, it's very tough. It's very tough to pay off the $9,700 price tag. But uh, if you can get that done, or if you can get that lineup construction going that I mentioned where you play these other guys and you have money to spend, maybe the 115 is enough. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying that and only you should start your lineups with 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 um, Almeida, and then I'll figure it out later. I think you figure out the first part, and then if you can play Almeida, you play him. Uh, I think that's that's kind of the the the, the idea. Uh, and I'm not play, playing Shamil plus one seven. All right, Gabriel Gabonfin, the brother versus uh, Munir Lenez. Let's first look at the prices. 
He's a minus 180, so I imagine he should be like 70, you know, 88 to 74, something like that, 87 to 75. And it's about right. Let's take a look at the inside the distance property again for 8,800. You got to be pretty darn close to, to pick them inside the distance. I don't think you have that out of bond theme. Let's see. It's close though. I mean, plus 120 bond theme inside the distance. It, it's close enough. <laughs> it's so it's close enough to make this player pool. Um, as I mentioned, it's going to be a difficult card and, and, he is definitely in play. Um, Lizez, I want to see plus 300, at least uh, inside the distance. Doesn't quite get there, though. So Lizez is probably not going to do it for me. Um, but Bonfim definitely makes the list. All right. Uh, Gregory Rodriguez versus Bruno Ferreira. You want another great inside the distance prop? Let's look at this one. This is another one, which is minus four, 400. The only reason I didn't put that in my must play, like make it easy list is because, because you only have like one side of this, that, that rates to, to finish. Um, one of them is a plus 250 underdog, but let's take a look. Let's, let's see what the various inside the distance props are. So first of all, Rodriguez inside the distance minus 200. That's a smash. You know, that is like a smash play. That is I think that is the best inside the distance prop aside from Almeida on the whole card for it, for one person. So, uh, I mean, it's hard to, hard to argue with that. Definitely a strong play. The Ferreira by decision one is, is interesting. You know, he's plus 400 and normally I would say that's not enough, but, in a in a in a card where you could use a punt or two, maybe plus four hundred is enough. You know, he's only seventy one hundred. So, if twenty percent of the time he gets that finish at seventy one hundred, I think that I think you're going to be really happy you know, that that you did that. So, I think that he's going to be a punt that I'm going to include in my pool. So Ferrer for Ferreira and Rodriguez. So I guess I should go back to it. I guess I, I guess I should recharacterize this as a fight you have to have, um, because if if Rodriguez does not pay this off, I mean if he does not get a first or second round knockout at the, at the earliest, um, at the latest, it's probably because Ferreira knocked him out. So may, maybe maybe so maybe we could consider this the fifth of the key fights, you know, we'll, we'll add the Walker fight and we'll add Rodriguez Ferreira to this. And so what you can do, you know, again, you could, you could birdcage those five fights or round robin, sorry, those five fights, get every combination. If you play enough lineups uh, and just, you know, and, and then just fill in the rest with the fill in the last slot. And listen, I've played worse than doing stuff like that. All right. Um, Pateria versus Shogun Rua. I, I can't imagine this fight being playable, but oh, but I bet it's going to be. Yeah, I, I guarantee you it's going to be. So you have 89 versus 7,300. So I presume it's going to be like a minus 200, minus 250. Um, wow, this is interesting. Oh, this is about right. So Pateria is about a plus 180 total. Um, I, I mean, minus 180 total. I guess he's, he's priced pretty much okay. Now, again, at 88, 8,900, you need to have pretty close to an inside the distance prop of, of, of Pickham. And unfortunately, uh, he does. <laughs> Potera inside the distance, actually minus 120, you know? So you, you think the fight like this would be one you'd want to fade, but unfortunately, the Potera side of this is very, very live. You know, so he's another one of those 9K guys. You have to filter through your lineups. Um, very, very difficult. Um, again, what I would suggest is, again, is, is that you you check back for ownership uh, late, you know, as we get later on in the in the process. Like, listen, we still have another two days. And if any of these $9,100 or $9,200 guys I've, I've, I've discussed ends up under 20% or under 15%, you should you must make sure to have them. Okay, because there's really no difference between any of these guys. 
Um, and I think the Pateria uh, pick is not going to be that popular. So um, uh, definitely in play. Rua, uh, Shogun, I, uh, his inside the distance prop is way too poor. Uh, no, not a lot of takedown upside, so I don't like that underdog. Tiago Moises versus uh, Melchizio Costa. Um, so he's a minus 400 or so, minus 360 if you, you know, factor in the big. And what is he, 9,500, I imagine? Let's see. He, where did he go? Did he... Uh, he get knocked out. Oh, I I, I skipped him. So, so Moises Moises is nine k. I mean, that's that's actually pretty reasonable win equity. I mean, nine k. I mean, you're that look look at uh, what's his name? Um, the guy we just talked about puts a rare Terry. He's the eighty nine hundred. He was only minus two hundred. You're this is actually really good win win equity. Um, only nine k at minus four hundred or so. That's pretty. That's pretty damn good. Um, with respect to the, his inside the distance prop, it's actually pretty poor. Um, let's see. Moy says inside the. I shouldn't say poor, man. It's plus one ten. It's close enough to pick him, and considering that he has grappling upside, also throw him in. He's just another one. Uh, so it's uh, gonna be fun. Moises, Pateria, Rodriguez, all these nine Ks, uh, Bonfine, uh, the, the, which was the second one. The, you know, all these nine Ks make sense. Uh, we talked about Paul Craig and Johnny Walker. Lauren Murphy versus Jessica Andrade. So Andrade is a minus 500. She's actually being priced properly. She is, I mean, as far as win odds go, she's 9,400. So again, with 9,400, you, what do you need? You need both. You need it, uh, inside the distance prop above even money and the grappling upside, or you need an inside the distance prop well over even money. And I don't think you get it out of Andrage. Oh, I hope not. Andrage inside the distance is plus 110, maybe plus 125. Just, it's just not quite good enough but i have to say again i mean just barely not good enough if you're playing 150 you got to have some of this i mean who's to say that andrade at half the ownership of almeida or half the ownership of rodriguez or you know who's to say that that andrade doesn't get two takedowns and and, and win in the first round and, and score 120 you know, at extraordinarily low ownership. You know, she's, this is going to be, you know, this is the, there are two fights that I think are really low owned in general. Those are the two fights before the two five rounders. And this Andrade fight can't be owned. I don't think. Uh, Lauren Murphy, uh, no thanks. Just the win odds are just not good enough. Uh, we already talked about the two main events. So let's, let's finish off with Gilbert Burns versus Neil Magny. Another huge favorite, so I imagine he's going to be four, you know, ninety four hundred. Uh, only ninety three, not not that bad, All right? Those types of odds usually are ninety four, ninety five. So there's a tiny sliver of win equity, not as much as uh, the other one. Uh, 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 what's his name? Who's the nine K guy we just talked about? That was. Well, 89 Puerto Rico wasn't bad. Um, Andrade, no, no, it wasn't Andrade. We already talked about Walker, Craig. Yeah, it was, it was, um, it was, uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico at, at minus 300 at that price is. Oh, no, she was minus 200. Also, Moises, sorry, Moises was the winner. I think. Moises, I mean, that's a, that's a big, big. Big gap between what he should be priced at. I think he should he should be ninety four hundred. I, nonetheless, uh, Burns is priced relatively well. Um, let's look at the inside distance prop though. Burns inside the distance is good enough, man. It's minus one ten plus some grappling upside. So here's another one. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be tough. 
Neil Magny, it's just not good enough. Plus 380. Just, just don't bet on plus 380 guys. In, in, uh, the only time you bet plus 380 guys in the Uf in UFC DFS is when his entire win condition is based on KOs, which is why I don't mind something like Ferreira, but he did, he's not minus plus 400, you know? Um, so Burns, yep, and no Magni, and we talked about the main. So that's an S load. Um, but unfortunately, that's 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 the deal. You know, what you could do again, you make it easy for yourself is you play those five, you know, those four or five key fights. And then pick your favorite of those nine Ks, you know, um, or if you want to take stands on those nine, on those uh, eight Ks or whatever, then you could screw around a little bit. Okay. But I think it's a very reasonable way to play. You, you play, you know, the key fights and then you shuffle in the good nine Ks who you can afford. God forbid you can get one of these 7,100 homes, hundreds home. Like if you get, you know, if you play a couple with Ferreira, you know, uh, you get that one home. Then, then maybe you get two 9Ks or something like that uh, after after you're done. So anyway, really, really tough uh, DFS card. Um, uh, I'll be playing all 150. And it's uh, the 100,000 you're giving for first is not enough. I'll just say that. It's just going to be that much harder to win. Anyway. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow uh, for the betting show, which is obviously going to be much different. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck.